Well, hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Crickets to Cha-Chings. My name is Lauren Keplinger, and today with me, I am super excited to sit down and talk with Ange Swan Doyon from The Social Focus. Um, and we are going to talk all about social media and your product or digital-based business and the intersection of those two. So welcome, Ange. Hey, thank you so much. I'm so excited to chat all things business today. Yes, me too. I'm really excited about this conversation, both for my own personal information <laughs> and also to share this with the audience. <laughs> That's the nice thing about podcasting, how we can learn from each other and we all get takeaways and so does the audience. So that's fantastic. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So before we jump right into um, social media and everything, can you kind of introduce yourself and tell yeah. people about your background and what you do? Yeah, so I have uh, 13 plus years background in marketing and social media, uh, the last four and a half years as a product social stylist. So it's basically a photography stylist. I work alongside like my business partner and co-host, Nat Karen at The Social Focus. Uh, you know, we develop strategies to help product-based businesses create really great imagery and content that resonates with their audience and can sell more. So we do that through our online programming, as well as our in-person working with a lot of uh, local companies to really assist them in terms of staying on brand and connecting with their audience because it's, you know, social media is such a visual platform. So that's just kind of our jam that we love helping businesses grow. Yeah. That's super cool. And I like that you mentioned um, that it, it is such a social or a, a visual platform. That's something that I have seen and I'm sure you've seen too. Anybody that's been on the internet running a business for like, you know, five years, 10 years, whatever, like the visual aspect of that, the um, bare minimum requirement is so much higher these days than it was right. like when I got started selling online in 2012 nobody really expected like beautiful pictures. <laughs> right. And it's so interesting that you say that because it has shifted and changed. And I mean, we're so grateful because we all have a camera. It's our phones and the, the phones are, there's an opportunity there. And sometimes it's just these little tweaks where you can take a photo from being good to really great. And that's where, you know, standing out among amongst you know everyone else on social who are screaming for attention to get their eyes on their products so that's where you know that strategy of just really speaking to the right people and creating imagery that just connects um there's a that's a big strategy towards it yeah yeah okay so before we hit record on this Angie and i were talking about sort of the intersection of social media and etsy and where that happens and how that can happen um, and one thing that I mentioned to her was that a lot of people get really stuck um, with social media and a product-based business. And when I say product-based business for people who are listening, I mean either an actual physical product or a digital file or a printable or something like that. Um, so you're selling this product that's not in, you know, in contrast to like a service that you're selling. So can you talk to me a little bit about social media and like, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do on social media with our product-based business? How does this work? Well, that's a great question. And, and to start, you know, it's the old saying of putting all your eggs in one basket. And that's where leveraging, specifically when you have an Etsy shop, leveraging social media. And that doesn't mean you have to be on every platform. In fact, we don't recommend being on every platform because when you're trying to be everything to everyone, it becomes overwhelming. And that's where that consistent strategy just completely falls off on the wayside. So in terms of, you know, something like Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, these are all great in leverage to an Etsy shop specifically for products. We want to be visual because it's something we want to storytell of, okay, what this, what is this? Who is this for? And so in terms of getting started, we talk a lot about consistency and strategy, but the number one thing that we have spoken about over and over again is understanding who are you speaking to? So really just peeling back before you think, how often do I need to post? And should I be on this platform? And what hashtags do I use? None of that is going to matter until you understand who am I speaking to? Are you speaking to the moms? Are you speaking to moms with three kids or one, like we're talking about being really, really specific. 
does this mom do yoga? Is she a Starbucks drinker or is she a Dunkin' Donuts or a Tim Hortons kind of coffee drinker? Like these are- just in Canada for those of you that are- So I had to say Tim Hortons. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'm like, yeah, Dunkin', you know. (laughs) (laughs) But these are all, you know, these little quirks and they develop, you know, the type of people we're trying to speak to. You don't have to speak to everyone. In fact, that's what we don't want you to do. But when you can really visualize that, that ideal dream customer, if you could write out who they are, what their business looks like, what their morning looks like, their lifestyle, where they shop, you're kind of developing this avatar. And so to get started with social, this is the storytelling. And when we're talking specifically with products, whether it's templates or physical product, you know, you're, you're speaking to the problems that they might be facing. So what what solution does this offer that you have? Uh, what's going to make it easy for them? Or what's going to be that perfect gift? Because you know where they're going on the weekend for their, you know, kid's birthday party, whatever it is. Um, so that to me is the ultimate first place to start is identify who you're speaking to and use their language, you know, offer the solution, storytell. That's a big part too. You know, we talk a lot about imagery, which is incredibly important because it's that, that hook, really, it's the first thing they see. Um, but second to that is the storytelling and putting them in that situation where they can say, yeah, this, I have to get, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. Um, so there's the two parts, there is the image and then the storytelling in terms of language and creating that type of content. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make the point that so many of these skills that we're talking about here are important for all aspects of your business. Like in my Etsy program, scale your sales, the very first thing I talk about is developing that dream customer. Like that is something that is a business skill, like beyond Etsy, beyond social media, this goes across all platforms. Yeah. So, you know, when people get intimidated by social media, a lot of times it's because they don't have some of those details worked out for themselves. Um, And that is something that is going to be helpful across the board (laughs) with the business. And I I Um, think where people miss that is they think they're eliminating the number of customers they can serve. But when you're speaking to everyone, you really are speaking to no one. And that doesn't mean you're going to deter. So when I say like speak to that person, that doesn't mean you're going to you know, shoo away anybody else. Um, but it will make it easier when it comes to actually crafting and creating content, specifically visuals. Right. Yes. Um, and one thing that you kind of like mentioned and then kept going, but I wanted to come back to it for a second. Yeah. In terms of platforms, you know, you mentioned Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, there's so many platforms. (laughs) How do you get started (laughs) saying, like, this is where I want to focus my energy or like, this is the one that's going either. This is where I want to focus my energy, or this is the one that's going to be the most beneficial for me to focus my energy or are those the same thing? Well, it it actually really ties back into that dream customer and ask yourself, where are they hanging out? Because you could be rocking Instagram, but if you're dream customer doesn't hang out on Instagram, if they're like, no, I I can't stand it or Facebook or LinkedIn, whatever it is. uh, That's a big thing too. So identify where is it that they're hanging out. For an example, Pinterest is fantastic for resources. So like those digital downloads, those templates, Mm -hmm. those prints, Pinterest is definitely somewhere I would recommend uh, if that's what you're selling in your shop to really invest some time into Pinterest because Pinterest is used like a search engine. So people are looking for done for you content as opposed to, um, you know, selling handmade artisan jewelry or soaps. You know, Instagram is really great for that because there's all the great shopping tools. Um, Visually, you can really show it. Video content is just like skyrocketing. So to actually be able to show the physical product, you know, you're giving your potential customer, the visual of, oh, I can understand the size of it because she's showing me it in her hands or in use. Um, and that's going to help people, you know, eliminate the questions they might have. So it's really just finding out where they're hanging out. And to be honest, and to be completely frank, find one that you can understand. And that it's not good. If, it, if it's going to feel like, oh my gosh, I have to do this, then maybe it's not the right platform. So 
you know, learning the tools and, and mastering and feeling really confident, I do think is a big important piece because if every time you open up the app to use it for your business and you dread it and you loathe it and you hate it, like you're likely not going to perform very well because that's the energy you put behind it, right? Yeah, that's me with TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. I, I jumped, uh, Nat, my co-host, we started with TikTok. She's like really rocking it. And I'm working on my own and, and it's, uh, you know, I'm giving it a little bit more of a try, but it's, it's true. Some of these ones, again, I love Instagram. I love the storytelling that can happen on Instagram. So that's where, you know, we spend most of our time, um, but also trying things out because you never know if it feels good and comfortable. There's, there's people are out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what you said is really important um, in terms of not only like forcing yourself to use a platform that you don't like. So for instance, with me, with TikTok, it was like, <laughs> oh gosh, this is like, I'm dreading this task, but also that person that you are appealing to, like if my target market is, you know, a 40 year old mom, I mean, maybe she hangs out on TikTok, but that's not like the majority of the demographic for something like TikTok. If my demographic is like college age girls, absolutely. Then, you know, perhaps you need to look at TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and on those platforms too, I think one of the misconceptions is, oh, well, I don't have enough followers, and I'm not able to sell because I only have you know 200 followers or 300 followers. I can tell you right now, if you do that exercise and really identify the right audience for yourself, your ideal customer and speak to them, you can still sell your products through, with only 300 followers, 150, as long as they're the right ones, because they're more likely to see your content. So the whole idea of I have to have 10,000 followers in order to you know, be successful at selling, I'll tell you right now, not true. Yeah. And having 10,000 followers doesn't necessarily mean you're going to sell anything if they're not. Exactly. Yep. If you've got 10,000 followers and they don't care what you have to offer, it can look really great, but that doesn't mean it's money in the bank. Yeah. So when you are looking at, let's say, a social media post on a platform that has a caption, so like not as much like, I'm not, I don't, I don't know TikTok has captions, but my <laughs> very, understanding very minimal. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so when you are able to kind of have this more storytelling aspect through a caption, um, can you kind of talk to us about what that looks like with a product-based business? Because I know a lot of people get really stuck with a couple of things, not knowing how to talk about their product in a way that's anything other than just like, here's my necklace, you should buy it. Um, right. But also having everything kind of, which I know this is where a lot of people start, but kind of just only telling stories about yourself, like having your account be focused around yourself. Can, can you kind of talk about that? Yeah. So when we talk about storytelling, and I think I kind of mentioned this or alluded to it earlier is not that every product, like maybe a necklace doesn't solve a problem, but it can, if someone's looking for that beautiful gift for their mom this Mother's Day, why not something the unique that is handmade? Like, what are the what are the differentiators? Um, so, listener, you know, ask yourself like, what makes this different? How much time goes into making that maybe that one piece, or what inspired? Tell me the story of why those colors, or why that shape, or why you use clay in, instead of this or that. Um, so that's how we allude to the storytelling and. It, it also paints a picture of the, the kind of heart that goes behind it, especially um, handmade products. But any, any product, whether you've designed it, what is the why? If you've read Simon Sinek's Start With Why, it's a great business book because it really does come down to that because your customer is asking, well, why should I buy from you when I can also find it here? Um, so identifying the differentiators, that would be one part of storytelling, solving any problems, especially, um, you know, around seasons, uh, Mother's Day gift giving, um, sharing your own customer stories. I think that's a lot of when we talk about content creation, where people are like, I don't know what else to say, except it's this much and you can <laughs> buy it now is, you know, <laughs> refer back to and I know Etsy's fantastic. Am I frozen? Mm -mm. Oh, not okay. for me. Okay, great. Uh, where people, you know, Etsy is a great uh, place to find content to recreate and repurpose. So using those reviews and, and sharing like what someone had to say about it. 
Um, that's one way I would definitely recommend. So again, identify problems, share, share a solution, paint the picture. So imagine like that's that kind of storytelling. We, we talk about hooks in terms of caption. It's the first thing that people will, will read on that top line, like let's say specifically on Instagram. And those are words like, imagine the look on her face when she opens this. Like it's just those alluding words. Um, and even more than that, in terms of captions, sometimes this is the ever evolving social platforms which we've seen with Instagram, they offer so much video opportunity. And so these are those features and trends that, you know, the more they push out, the more they're really encouraging accounts to adapt to. So sometimes actually writing into words, what, what makes your product difference, excuse me, different is showing that. And that's where video content is like, if you haven't jumped on any kind of video content on social, like that is where you have a better opportunity to connect people. And I get it, a lot of people don't like to have their face on camera. I totally understand that. Um, but if you can, it's really great and you can be silly, you can be really natural. Like that's where uh, there's just such an opportunity to share. Hey guys, so I started this and I'm so proud to announce you know, this and show people and because people like to buy from other people. So it doesn't, I mean, I, I'm all about creating really strong imagery. Um, but there is more to the strategy and that is sometimes just that honest, authentic showing up and, and serving your audience in a way that's very natural. I mean, I don't know about you, Lauren, but like for me, if I hear someone's story or I see them, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all that work that went into it. And oh, she's, oh, she's, a she's got a little boy like me, my age, like people are looking to connect and resonate. And it's, it is the social part of social media. Um, yeah. So it doesn't have to be, you know, this is on sale. Bye, bye, bye. I know selling can be uncomfortable. So that's, that's where I keep saying that word storytelling um, can, can kind of take a little bit of that pressure off, I think. Yeah. And I really liked what you said about repurposing some of the stuff from Etsy um, because it made me think about the way that people are writing reviews a lot of times. Like I know for my shop, I sell monogrammed baby blankets. And so then people typically, I would say like the vast majority of my customers are buying them for a, a baby shower gift. Right. And they will talk in reviews about, you know, I've ordered these for three different moms and they cried when they opened it and blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's like that is, they're telling you the story of right. what happens when you buy this as a gift. Yeah. And um, that's a simple yeah. screenshot. Screenshot yeah. that, maybe make it nice on brand in Canva, throw it up there, testimonials. That's that's like straight from the horse's mouth that you can't buy that kind of marketing. Right, yeah. So, okay, so if somebody is sitting here and they're like, okay, well, I have my Etsy shop <laughs> and I wanna dabble in social media, but I don't even know where to get started. Like I just start and I throw, throw something <laughs> up there. Can you talk to us a little bit about why, how this is not gonna become a complete time suck and how we can like manage this while also managing other parts of your business? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I never wanna throw more work at people. Um, so to get started, one, obviously we know who are, who we're speaking to find the platform where that ideal customer is hanging out, create a very clear bio. So who you are, what you offer, how you can help are usually three things that are really important to highlight. Um, and you know, just make it easy. And then in terms of a strategy, you know, to get start, whatever you can commit to and be consistent with, uh, if you, if you can post every day, sure. I don't. Um, so that doesn't, you know, consistency doesn't mean every day. So mm -hmm. wherever you're starting, I mean, some platforms are a little bit different. I know TikTok, they say multiple times a day can really help you grow. Um, Instagram can be, you know, two to three times a week to get started as long as it's consistent. And, you know, we, Nat and I, with our membership, we've talked to our our members about crafting, we call them themes. So as long as you can, you know, have some, a few themes developed and keep going back to that, that's a nice way to make creating content easy. So for us at The Social Focus, we've always heavily relied on educate, entertain, empower, a little bit about us and then our membership. So when we're, you know, okay, what can we post this week? What do we have on the go? We usually just pull one of each from those. It just helps us stay consistent, stay on brand 
and we're not constantly trying to find like what can we do um but also like we just talked about pull and repurpose repurposing is like peanut butter and jam it just makes sense <laughs> so you know, find the things you already have so like we just mentioned take a screenshot of some of the reviews you've already established if you have any video of you making or packaging up your products uh, if you have any video testimonial from customers, if you have just like pictures that you, you use maybe just on the site and you haven't used them on your social yet, okay. So just, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So you can repurpose content that you already have, but also having these kind of themes in mind. Uh, one of your themes might be behind the scenes and you're like, this is, okay, I'm going to show me actually packing this up what does it look like as an entrepreneur you know as a maker and and a product seller so showing things like that just being mindful um that's where i would suggest to get started just clear bio of what you offer find some content that you've already created and uh, and repurpose and then just start thinking about those themes as you're moving forward so you'll start to recognize in these moments you know when an order comes in like oh like maybe it's a, that could just be like, this is how I look every time an order comes in and that's a quick little video and it's exciting, right? Like, I mean, we're business owners. This is, this is amazing. Like that's, we appreciate our customers um, and not overthink it. Yeah. That would probably and be I, the last and we don't have to overthink it. I, I like, uh, yes, I think that that's huge. And I think that just kind of allowing it to, uh, I, maybe not everybody feels this way, but I know when I started my Instagram for business, it was like, this is just my business. And like, there is no overlap between my Instagram for my personal. I have a separate account for my business for my personal. And like, none of those are overlapping. Um, and it's kind of, I actually don't, well, I still have a personal account, but I don't really use it anymore. But I, I it's kind of like overlapped at, through the right. years because it's like, you know, and, and a lot of people have a, a lot of varying feelings about showing their kids or showing their families, and you're allowed to draw those boundaries wherever that feels comfortable and safe to you. Right. Um, but so it doesn't have to be, you know, like I have a lot of stuff out there between the courses and the podcast and all of that stuff. And yet, if you really think about it, like I do show my kids on social media every now and then, but like, you don't really know much about them, <laughs> right. you know? So like, I kind of casually mention my kids or casually have a picture of, you know, this might like at the beach or whatever, but like, yeah. it's not like you know, every detail of every, like th there can be boundaries while still sharing. And there life. should be. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. But, be. It, but it does. We all know sense. those oversharers that are really. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's why they have a mute button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> guilty of using that but to your point for what you offer your audience and what you sell sharing a little bit that you have a family that you're a mom is also resonating that's a connecting point to to people who are purchasing from you you know if you didn't have any kids and you're like yeah no like I'm, I'm single I just make baby blankets that's okay <laughs> but it's just like oh interesting but that could be a differentiator from someone else on the platform who's like oh no like I got three kids and I made all theirs and I offer it now. It's like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Right. So, right. I, but I do agree with boundaries. Yes. <laughs> and the people are, you know, like if you don't want to do that, if you say like, I'm not comfortable having a picture of my kid on the internet, we don't do it personally and I don't want to do it for business. That's okay too. That is not mm -hmm. like, it's not a requirement of that. You're allowed to set those, those parameters for yourself, but thinking through like, what, you know, like you talked about those themes behind the scenes or, you know, educating people about the quality of your product, talking about your materials or how you learn to get started or whatever that wants to be, you know, for you, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I show time-lapse videos of my embroidery machines all the time because I love time-lapse videos. That's my favorite. They're so satisfying to watch, to watch right? Yeah. They are. Cause I'm very impatient in person. So I'm like, <laughs> like to watch it sped up <laughs> well and that's interesting too because it does right there you know you're showing your audience and customers you know like this takes time like imagine this slowed down in real time and it's just proof in the pudding that you're like yeah it's me it's me behind here putting this all mm -hmm. together um that, that's great connection points and uh, I, and I think it makes sense and again because there's so many different features and I, I usually allude to instagram it's just usually where we spend most of our time um 
is, you know, there's Instagram stories. Those are great opportunities. They go down in 24 hours. So if you wanted to show a little bit more of like, oh, you know, it's Sunday with the fam, like, yeah, it's a mom and we're doing this today. And, um, you know, those are great opportunities. And then, you know, the, the static feeds and the reels are maybe a little bit more just on brand to what, what the product is. But I mean, the biggest myth is you don't have to be selling in every single post just by, by sharing of like what goes into the behind the scenes is, um, is building that connection. And it's supposed to be about our audience. That's the last thing kind of on on this note is, you know, when writing your captions and creating content, kind of think what's in it for them. Because very easily we can go that route because it's comfortable. We know what we need and what we like. Um, so that's kind of, and you see that. I'm sure you've seen it online where you're like, is this for you? Okay, I don't know if this is for me. And that's where, you know, I'm like, I'm going to unfollow. I def- that's not, not what, no offense, but I don't think what you're serving is for me. And that's okay. So, you know, if people are looking to grow and really connect with the right audience, ask yourself like, Hey, if I'm going to post this before you hit post, what's in it for them? Did I offer value? Did I educate somewhere? Is this empowering? Is this going to make them think, Oh, I didn't know that Think Like really interesting. Um, so that would be one kind of last thing that I think is important to, to be mindful of. Yeah. Do you have any favorite tools for social media, like either schedulers or, um, I don't know, tools that you like to use within, um, I mean, it, schedulers are the first thing that like jump to mind, but if you have other things that I don't know about. <laughs> yeah, I have bounced between scheduling. The more, you know, sometimes I get on a really good roll of scheduling them out, but I'm also for myself personally, I'm a little bit more in the moment with the social focus account that I share with my partner, Nat. Uh, we're a little bit more intentional. Like, so we do follow those themes, but a lot of the times, because we're always shifting, um, testing things out, testing times of days to post, um, mm-hmm. just being really aware of like, not just willy nillying it, but being very mindful. Uh, but I mean, one of the tools I love is Canva uh, to create carousels. Carousels are fantastic for Instagram. You can create a template, swap them out. Uh, we do that quite often. They're great ways to educate carousel and that's really great too if you really don't like doing video uh carousels they have a a nice you know shelf life to them your second post in a carousel gets shown twice which is really interesting in terms of how the algorithm shows your content um and they keep people on your page a little bit longer so they just offer a little bit more of an expanded way people can swipe through uh and 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 receive content that way so canva's great for that for templates story templates reels covers all of that um oh my gosh i'm probably on canva like every single day um right i mean so yeah canva and then like i mentioned before not specifically a tool but repurposing. So if you have a blog, if you've written any other content, if you have a lot of content on, on your Etsy, uh, or reviews, like pulling from content that you already have and, and, and repurposing that is a really good in terms of strategy, look at your insights on Instagram. So if you're a business or a creator account, look and see what your audience enjoyed and do more of that. Like that's probably one of the best suggestions is there are insights. If you have that type of account, go back and look at them at least, you know, every two weeks, every month and review, okay, the last 30 days. Wow. Interesting. This post did really, really well. How can I churn something very similar like this out again? Um, So it is, you know, measuring what you've already put out there is an important strategy. Everybody likes the baby pictures on mine. (laughs) Oh, puppies and babies. I mean, you can't go wrong with puppies and babies. If you want to get a puppy or a baby somehow and it makes sense, go for it. Well, that was okay. So, so that you gave me an excellent segue here. So that's my next question is, um, in terms of having, I actually see this a lot, um, not as much in the product based business space, but more in like the coaching space. Right. But I'd like to see what your thoughts are on it in the product business, um, genre where like the picture and the caption are completely unrelated to each other. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. (laughs) You don't like it. Okay. I don't. Um, and Instagram, I'll, I'll speak to Instagram specifically. They don't like it either because your image should match the content that's in the caption. 
it's just if you, and it's the same thing with hashtags like using irrelevant hashtags when it has absolutely nothing to do with your your business the caption the image it's actually not going to work well for you in the long run um it's kind of like clickbait I mean, mm -hmm. really, and after a while, that might get a bunch of traction or views or or likes. But again, we mentioned this before, that doesn't necessarily mean that gets you a follow, that gets you a sale, that gets you anything. If you're going to use vanity metrics, you're going to get vanity metrics in response. You're not going to get true followers who are like, oh, no, like this, this makes sense. I love this. I want to purchase from you. I want to follow you. I want to learn from you. Um, so yeah, quick answer. So you're telling me I can't like just it. have a whole feed of my baby telling people to listen to my podcast. <laughs> it's not where I would go. Could you make that work here and there? Yes. And that's where, like, as long as, you know, again, for what you offer in terms of with your Etsy shop, it still makes sense. Um, on the podcast of what you're sharing. Yeah. You can make it work, but yeah, but every picture is a baby to, to reel everybody in because babies are cute. In the long run, it, it'll it'll grow tiresome, but there are ways to make it work. I'll, I'll use one quick example, and this was actually for for service based. We uh, we were running um, a course for realtors, and a lot of them were like, "I love sharing about my dog." And it's like, that's mm -hmm. great, but that has nothing to do with real estate. If you're going to share about your dog and then say, "Hey, here are five things if you're selling your home and you have a pet and you need to do before you list your house." Like maybe put the kitty litter away. Um, make sure you clean up the backyard. If you have a dog, now you can make it work. Now the caption can go with that cute picture of your dog, but you're still offering value to your audience. So that's where yeah. like, there is that, there, that opportunity, right? That that's a really good point to think strategically <laughs> about even once you figure out like, you know, this is what people like, like people like to see pictures of my family. And you know, where that feels comfortable for me, where, right. whenever I decide that, but then like, how does that relate back? And also just thinking about what, why do people like to see pictures of my family in my podcast and in my coaching side of my business? It's because that is a part of the story and that, Absolutely. And that works, you know, like I have four kids. So the, the sort of joining forces of being able to run a business while having four kids is a huge part of the story. And Cause so people want to see help. themselves in you. And it's like, wow, like that's amazing. How can I say, oh, I'm just so busy where it's like, she's doing it. It's inspiring. So it, it, that definitely makes sense. But thinking about that for people who are listening and, and to say like, you know, if you have a certain um, sort of category that people seem to respond to better, how does that work in terms of then like bringing it back around to what you're actually trying to do so that it's not just, you know, because when I think about like my personal account, like I can just throw up a picture of my kids and it doesn't matter. Like I'm not trying totally. to do anything, <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but like when you're thinking strategically in terms of a business, like how does it relate back to what your goal is with that account? Right. I mean, sharing a little bit of, you know, personal on a business account, especially for products, I think there is a time and place for it. Again, it's kind of like meet the maker and, and sharing your why and uh, yeah, like balancing out, you know, new products, but also, oh, yeah, like I'm a bit, I'm a busy mom of four, but uh, I love this and I'm so passionate. Again, people like to resonate and, and buy from people. Um, so there, there's that, there's still that storytelling no matter what pictures of people of faces nine times out of town, they will perform better. And that's because we're, we're humans and we're looking for connection. So we can only be bombarded with, you know, pictures of soap, 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 <laughs> so much where if it's like hands and, or if it's like holding it up and like showing it a different way, those will probably perform better because people were just naturally as humans, like, Oh, people. Wow. Especially after the last two years, right? Yes. I was going to say, faces. I think that that part of it has increased. And even, I, I mean, the, the lack of human connection, but also like wanting to support a smaller business, like all we've Absolutely. heard about through the pandemic and everything is like these large corporations and how much they've profited off of all of this. And, you know, it, it to be able to say like, I... And I actually, as you were talking, was was thinking about um, as all of the stuff in Ukraine and Russia started, 
there is this huge and continues to be this huge push to be able to support like Ukrainian um, Etsy sellers and stuff. So it's like you right. see this in small glimpses with people of like really wanting that support. Like when you buy from my business, that impacts a real actual person and not somebody that's got $90 billion and they don't really care about Absolutely. another $40. <laughs> and I would hope most people want to feel good about their purchase. And yeah. if they're not used to that, show them how good it can feel to yeah. support a small business. Yeah. And I think that that as that conversation has become more forefront in general of the smaller business and, um, you know, the, the sort of flexible income thing that is a lot more prevalent now, um, that that story is even more important. Yeah, I agree. We're still well, talking and, about stories, right? It's all storytelling. Yeah, I mean, it's all, we started there, we ended there. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on and doing this today. My and pleasure. I'm really excited for people to hear this and to feel like it's not, it's not as hard as you think it is. Just much like everything else with business, you kind of have to jump in and get started and see how people react to it and then go from there. And pivot, enjoy the pivot, because there's always going to be that opportunity to change. You don't have to lock it all in all at once. That's that's kind of the fun part is really seeing where it can take you. Yeah. If people want to look at you up and see what you're doing, where can they find you? You can find my co-host Natalie and I at the social.focus on Instagram or online at the socialfocus.co. Uh, but we're usually, we're also on TikTok at the social focus, you know, we're just getting started, but if you want to check us out, we would be very grateful. Um, but we love sharing, you know, helpful tips specifically for product makers to how to craft better content faster. And that resonates with your audience. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Lauren.